Hey, everybody joining. Mallory, it does look like that is a fresh cocktail and not iced tea, but... It's, um, it's just confidence, though. I'm just... There we go. I'm just that we got kind some, of person. We got some ABBA playing for Mallory. Get it warmed up. Plate. Get a little bit of dancey emojis. Hello yes. Phoenix, yes, Bobby. Linda. ABBA. Uh, it's so good. This song has uh, a special place in my heart and my family's ooh. heart. Ooh, do we get a do we get story time at all? It's now? just um so I was a dance major. How's this for story time? Ooh. Um that's part of my degree. Um but yeah, we always play that at weddings and parties together and it's just a very special time when we are the dancing queens. So, uh <laughs> fellow ABBA fans, welcome uh, to the experience. There we go. <laughs> Love it. So we may, in the middle of the 20 minutes, just put on an ABBA playlist and me and Mallory will karaoke TBD of whether or not that happens. Mallory also at our wedding reception where I did have people do karaoke. Uh, Dancing Queen was one of the songs as well. So. I really love Winner Takes It All. Like, oh. you know, I'm a big uh, torch burner kind of karaoke <laughs> Uh, person, so. right. uh, went to Sweden, did not get to go to the ABBA Museum, or is it ABBA? It is ABBA Museum, but there we go. Anyways, Mallory, welcome back to the show. It's great to have you. For those of you who have not met Mallory, uh, everybody's probably met Mallory, but Mallory, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself again to those who haven't? Maybe some new folks in the community who are going to about to go through some user stories experiences. Sure. So I am Mallory Donahue. I'm an associate consultant at Slalom on the digital engagement team um, where I do a lot of chatbot implementations. So I work with Salesforce Einstein bots as well as any part of Salesforce that our client wants the bot to touch. So, um, you know, sky's the limit with Salesforce in a lot of ways. And you can do a lot of really cool things through the chatbot. So it's been a really... Uh, neat, awesome journey <clears throat> for me into Salesforce. I'm a career transitioner, as I mentioned at the beginning of our, uh, during our witty banter 1.0, um, my degree is in dance, visual art, and costume design, and I find myself in tech now. So for those of you who are career switchers, yay, you can do it. This is a great thing to do. And, um, a lot of our clicked coaches have been in the ecosystem for, you know, decades, and I love to learn from them. And I also like to offer the perspective of someone who came into this after um, doing something else for the first part of my professional life. So that's me. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Look at all these career switchers. Yeah. Like Mo and Drav, I think, created mm -hmm. Salesforce. Uh, yeah, we were so. born in the cloud. In Salesforce. <laughs> Born in the matrix. Yes. Uh, awesome. So we do have a few new people, which is always great. Welcome. For those of you who have been here before, you know the core click principles. For those of you who are new, this is how this works. We all get to learn from each other and it's super cool. So um, whenever you're going through these experiences, we want you to give them a try. We have you come up on stage. We have you share your work. And through that sharing, we all get to learn from each other, including me and Mallory. We get to learn each time we go through some of these experiences. And Mallory will be up here to share her expert feedback and help guide you along in your learning journey. Uh, this is a safe space. So if you think your user story sucks, that's OK. <laughs> Bring it up on stage anyways. This is as good of a place as you're going to get to be able to try out new things, explore new topics, try, try, try put it in front of everybody because we'll all get chances to learn. And then uh, we're listening to ABBA. We've got a bunch of emojis in the background. Mallory's drinking some kombucha. I'm out of coffee, but we're here to have some fun, first and foremost. Everybody says it. We mean it. Mallory, anything you want to add to this before we kick it off to an agenda? I uh, just, um, yeah, don't worry if it sucks, because if they were perfect, then I would have nothing to say. So, uh, you know, there's no such thing as your user story being bad. This is your first time hearing about them. They're kind of weird. Um, so they're weird and we'll all learn about them together and why we use them. So just embrace mm -hmm. the weirdness, embrace the uncertainty, get up and share when it's time. Perfect. Love it, love it, love it. All right, so here's a quick agenda, what we're gonna do, uh, overview and prompt, a little bit of the rules. We've shared a little bit about click, 
core principles. We'll talk about the prompt and the task you'll be going through. It is in LMS. Many of you have already seen it. If you haven't, that is a great place to navigate. I'll continue to link it while we're going through this experience. Mallory will give some tips and tricks. Mallory, you've done quite a few of these user story skill challenges, or maybe mostly team sprints, right? How many uh, of these do you think? Look, I was doing challenges there for a while and then sprints. Yeah. So um, awesome. I've done a lot of both. Yeah. Cool. Perfect. So we'll have 20 minutes for everyone to go through this task. Uh, me and Mallory will have some wonder, what do you, what do you banter? It's getting late on both of our ends. Uh, maybe some more coffee is needed. Maybe some karaoke, TBD. And then um, if you don't want to listen to us, just go ahead and mute us. You can work intently. If you do want to share while you're going through it or share your work, we can bring you up on stage to get some live feedback as we're going through it. Otherwise, me and Mallory are going to go kind of back and forth, talk about this particular prompt and how you might be able to navigate it while you're going through it. And then we're going to leave time for feedback and Q&A. So feedback sessions, you'll be raising your hands to be able to get up on stage, share the work that you've done. And again, that's how we all get to learn. Um, so with that, I'm going to introduce the scenario and the task. Although there is a question here I want to pop this up. If this is our first time, can we just watch the session? Brian, absolutely, you can just watch for sure. So we always recommend that people give it a shot no matter what. But if you're not quite there yet, it's okay to watch. But I still recommend giving it a shot. So. We're gonna introduce the scenario in the task and then we'll kick it over to Mallory for a few tips. So as a reminder, these are in the LMS. Again, you have some of this information, but this is the scenario. So you are gonna play a, the role of a Salesforce business analyst working with the American Red Cross to effectively source and distribute free emergency relief supplies when natural disasters strike. You have previously interviewed Sergio Gray, the general warehouse manager for the American Red Cross. Sergio Gray manages procurement and distribution of emergency relief supplies and is looking to improve this process using Salesforce. So your goal is to create user stories that capture the essence of your findings. The user stories will be a good starting point to, uh, for figuring out how to implement a solution for Sergio and his team. And you have been provided interview notes from your conversation with Sergio Gray to complete this task. So. I'm gonna go ahead and paste this in here as well. Again, this is in the LMS. These are some of the uh, some of the interview notes, which I'm not gonna put on the screen, but I will put the task on the screen and we can go back and forth with the scenario, but these interview notes will be critical to being able to do your user stories for sure. Um, so the task is um, generate user stories for Sergio using this format that we use very often. Create as many user stories as you can, but aim for at least five, and then review your user stories and pick your two strongest user stories. Test your two best user stories with these two questions, or these look like three questions, <laughs> two questions, which is, does the user story make it clear how to prioritize and schedule implementing a solution that will help with Sergio, not with Aaron? and then draft acceptance criteria for each user story. Each acceptance criterion should start with a verb that specifies what Sergio, sorry for the typo, will be able to do once the solution is built. And then the last bullet, this should go to the left, rewrite your acceptance criteria as if then statements. So you can answer each acceptance criteria with either true or false. So a lot of information there. I'm gonna go back again, the scenario. This is Sergio, not Aaron. Sorry for the typo, if you can tell we reuse a lot of these decks, we have a lot of experiences and I have pasted the interview notes in there. I'm going to pause talking and kick it over to Mallory really quick for some coach tips as they're going through this experience. Everyone, again, you're only gonna have 20 minutes to do this. I'm sure some people are starting, um, but Mallory, any quick tips before we get into some witty banner? Uh, just make sure your user stories are um, independent and testable and in that format, as a who, I want to what, so that why, make sure your what and your why are different things. They, you know, they can be related, but a lot of times I see those two things kind of like getting repeated or reworded. They're, they're different things. One's a what, one's a why, okay? So um, I think those are my, my biggest tips there. And let us know if you have any questions too. We can uh, incorporate some answers to questions into our witty banter. So happy to do that. Perfect, love it. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and start the timer. So we've got 20 minutes going. Everybody has 20 minutes to go through the sessions. This will take us to about 
3 or 3:30 ish which will give us lots of time for feedback and questions and as Mallory said if you want to come up on stage share where you're at share your process absolutely do that if you've got questions in the middle awesome ask away if you just want us to go away mute yourself mute us we'll be here in 20 minutes and we'll be able to help you out so um I'm going to go back to the task. And if you need me to move back and forth with the screens, please let me know. Again, all of this information is in the LMS, um, as well as the interview notes, which I won't pop up on the screen, but we can kind of chat through. So uh, Mallory, you went through this experience with Mo where we crap captured the interview notes. Is there anything that you remember as kind of like a starting point for this in the scenario at all? I know it was probably a while ago, so maybe not. Um, I had to be the other person oh you were yes i was jennifer gray um the thing i had that dance background um <laughs> so we need to do uh, some footloose now maybe you switch switch gears some some dirty oh, wait, dancing. It's not footloose. Um, dirty dancing what am i come doing on, Jeff. Uh, i know Jesus. yeah so that that was interesting um so i can't remember what i i did not see what sergio did but um, i bet these are your notes i guess but our, well, no, the, Jennifer was also a warehouse manager. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. a jumping off point, you know, I think there just weren't very good systems in place. Right. So we get into, okay, we're trying to do stuff, but we don't have a good way to do it. So what, you know, what are we trying to accomplish? We're trying to, you know, maybe something about inventory levels or something about, uh, getting all the information we need when we receive a request or we start to, you know, hear about those things. Um, so, you know, as a who, the who parts are kind of easy right now. Uh, this is not as easy when you're on a larger project. Sometimes you have to ask yourself, okay, who is doing this? Or, <laughs> you know, um, but right now we know that, you know, as a warehouse manager, right? So I want to what do I want to do? Do I want to track something? Do I want to um, fulfill orders? You know, things like that. Um, and then what's our why? What is it accomplished when we're able to fulfill orders or get all the appropriate information from our, um, from whomever's ordering from us, et cetera, et cetera. So I can't remember what we called them. Uh, we were a warehouse manager and who were the people who's, who we were sending things to. Um, I don't remember. I but I think it's probably in the yeah, it's in the interview. Notes. In the case, like in, in the industry. case manager, there's a case manager. Okay, distribution, maybe. Yeah. Um. Well, I, I it was it was a really good call out before this too, Mallory, and then you're alluding to it too. I think you know, how many user interviews I've seen through these experiences now. Um. I like consistently. I think the feedback that we see the most is whether it's the what and the why kind of bleed together a little bit with mm -hmm. also the acceptance criteria yeah. are there any like little mini hacks as you're you've been going through this that you've kind of seen do we have to use the want to or can't it's just to? very um it's very different from the way you've received work in the past probably okay especially if you're a career transitioner like i just had not heard of user stories okay so uh, you don't want to get too specific. So you don't want to get too specific, first of all. So it's it's kind of big picture. When I say you don't want to get too specific, you don't want to get tool specific or functionality specific. You want to get goal specific, right? So <clears throat> that's my big, that's my big tip there. And uh, Nicole says, do we have to use want to or can we use need to in the user stories? Um, I think it's, I, I would say it doesn't matter. Jeff has someone else said something different. Um. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm just I'm just the dude. So yeah, I uh, I I don't I don't think it would be a big deal. Um, but I I don't know I don't know maybe someone else would. I think I think the yeah. classic format is as a yeah. who I want to blank. I think the actually I think the the word that might be missing from this slide is the two. Mm -hmm. Um. 
there, I want to do what something. to so that, yeah, I want yeah, to. Yeah, so you don't yeah. want to be like, as a general warehouse manager, I want bonbons so that. So it's an action, you know, as a general warehouse, I want warehouse manager, I want to track my inventory I or I need yeah. to track my inventory so that. Now, uh, the want gives us that that verb that's a little aspirational, like it's not happening now, you know, so <laughs> I want to do this and the need is is kind of implied. But yeah, yeah, uh, it, it is it is sort of an action. There's a process in there. It's not I want a car. OK, it's I want to drive so that I can get to my appointments on time. Okay. I'm gonna make sure um, something like that. Uh, so you wanna you wanna get that in there. You're welcome, Nicole. Yeah, Sorry yeah. That went a little off. Yeah. No, 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 not at all. And I think, uh, I mean, so Mallory from I, I, I'm, I, and maybe maybe this isn't the case, but uh, might be with like others. Like, depending on a different team that you're working with, do you see different formats in user stories, or is it pretty consistent across the board at Solomon? format of the user story this as a who I want to what so that why that's pretty consistent acceptance mm -hmm. criteria that's where I see a lot of variation amongst teams um mm -hmm. or even amongst projects like it sort of depends on the depth of the project sometimes for my team we'll be like okay well we're doing an MVP of a bot so we're not getting crazy in here with acceptance criteria but um then we'll then we'll be put on another client and they are like, okay, we want a bulleted list in our acceptance criteria. Uh, and, and so yes, that that's the place where I see the most variation among clients. And that's always something to keep in mind, everyone, as you're going through these, that it's really good to follow the format that like we give you or or that a coach gives you. Follow it for the challenge and then know that you might receive some different guidance from from your team leaders or, or your, you know, whoever to whomever you report at your uh, organization when you get your job and then listen to them and, and you know, do it that way. <laughs> so always be flexible. Love it. Uh, Linda, so I, I'm looking at this right now. I don't, I, I'll, I'll try to see if I can dig this up right now. Um, actually, maybe Mallory, you might actually know the answer to this, but maybe not. Uh, right now, any requests? Yeah, so there's missing some some information as we pulled it from the notes. So it says right now, any request for emergency supplies is completed over email through Sergio's personal email inbox. Sergio has no way of seeing. Um, hmm. It can. Limited. It could be. It could be maybe like the status of an order, or it could be an order. seeing available inventory. Let's do both. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, why not? Linda, <laughs> Linda, you get a gold star for uh, attention to detail today. Wonderful. Uh, so we just added it in there. We'll go ahead and put Sergio's no way of seeing the status of an order or available inventory, both. And that might be redundant with some of the other ones, but thank you, Mallory, for, for tying together. Um, <laughs> the, the acceptance criteria on the last bullet point here, where it says rewrite your acceptance criteria as, as if then statements. Can you answer each acceptance criterion with either true or false? So that's a great, the more work you do here in user stories and in acceptance criteria, the easier time you have during the testing phase of your project. So um, you'll hear people talk about UAT, user acceptance testing, or the testing phase or whatever. And during that test phase, you write test scripts, the client writes test scripts, you write them together, whatever. Um, they can be different levels of um, specificity. But uh, let's say that we design, you know, something that's supposed to track inventory. Or I, I can see the inventory. Um, and our acceptance criteria is going to be about like viewing stock levels or something like that. And then if... Um, if then statement for that one. Sorry, now I'm I've got myself like in a, <laughs> in a <kombucha. laughs> like, you know, or or what if we want notifications? So if stock is low, then I get a notification, you know, yes. So a yes or no or something like that, you know. So that that's nice, but that's why we do a lot of work here. That 
the user story is useful, the acceptance criteria is useful throughout the project. Okay, so it's not just like right up front. It's, it's going to be used on and on and on. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, Mallory, how many user stories have you seen this week already, two days in? <sighs> Assigned to me right now, I think on this project, I've got six assigned to me. And I think on this project, we've got like 30, 20 or 30. Um, I hear some, I hear Mo and Grav feel like, oh, we have a hundred users. <laughs> Well, like it kind of depends on what the time frame. Like, where are you filtering this yeah. to? You know, um, this sprint, or or are we looking in the backlog too? So, uh, uh, the point I'm in my project right now, we have refined our user stories within our team, refined them with the client, and now we're moving them through various uh, stages. So. We've got, you know, waiting to be done. We've got in development. We've got ready for review, et cetera, et cetera. So um, anyway, that uh, that's what we're, you know, working on right now. And something I think is interesting from my work, and, and maybe this isn't that unique, but we design Einstein bots. And sometimes the who in our user story is the bot. It's mm. not, you know, so, so yeah. So we have a lot of times the roles on our projects are like, I will call them a website guest. Okay. Um, or an agent. So a lot of times the bot then will transfer to an agent. So what do we want the agent to see? Or what do we want the agent to be able to do, et cetera. Um, but sometimes the bot does things too. So I, I think that that is, a neat thing about chatbot work is that my bot is almost like a, a little entity in and of itself. The computer, the computers, they're coming after us. Uh, Elizabeth, you raise your hand. We'll go ahead and bring you up on stage here. Uh, Jeanne has a question, Mallory. So are user stories ever changed once the project starts? Well, the, absolutely. So when a project starts, you're, um, you don't create user stories, like, you, what do I want to say? You're generally going to get paid to create user stories, right? You you have to you have to be engaged with your client before you can make the user stories. So you're engaged with the client. Uh, you do some discovery with them or something, or or you bring in some user stories with you, and you must talk to the client about them. And that's when they can change. Mm -hmm. You have to talk to the client about them. They really need to accept them because that's how you get to say, I have done my job is when the user story acceptance criteria is fulfilled. Okay. So it's almost like a living contract between yourself and the client. And if they're like, well, you didn't do what I wanted, you get to go back to the user story and say, we fulfilled this user story. And hopefully that doesn't happen. You know, I don't want to give the impression that it's like contentious a lot, but if something else comes up, do we need to change the user story or make a new user story, put it in the backlog, et cetera. So um, they can change, but there does need to be a point where you're like, okay, we are, you know, these are the stories. Awesome. Great, great, great. All right. So Elizabeth, you've got your hand raised. Don't know if you're going to ask a question and let us know if that answered your question, Jan, or if you're going to share some work, but welcome to the stage, Elizabeth. What's going on? Hi. So, um, I am brand spanking new to user stories. Yay. Was taking it nice and simple, starting from the top and breaking it down. I just opened up a notepad and made five different things where it's as a, I want to, so that, so I could fill in the blanks. And as I was going, I started off with case manager. Okay. And as I continue to go, I'm like, oh, so maybe this might be something that would be better. I'm curious with regards to setting up user stories, is it better to start at the top of the approval process for your uh, user stories, I guess, is the way, I guess, I, I hope I'm putting it correctly. Yeah, I, I understand what you're asking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Or like, 
like I'm just curious what best practices or like what people generally do when trying to choose which users to sure. start with. Yeah. So I don't think there is a, a one, one way to start there, but that's a really good question. Cause you might think, man, I got to take care of Jennifer Gray first. Well, you know, um, do, uh, if, if Jennifer wants to, or Sergio, sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. Can I piggyback one more question on top oh, of yeah, that? Because it just popped in my head. Um, the thing that I'm thinking of too is like, because even just with the previous question, it's about documenting everything, right? Mm -hmm. So that if someone else were to st step into your shoes, they'd be able to see what's going on. So even thinking with that perspective, like, would it be better to set it up from maybe not like you're saying right now, it doesn't necessarily have to be specific, uh, but maybe sticking with the same user for the scenario. I hope I'm getting yeah, it. Let, let me, Sorry. Let me, I don't know yeah, if I just like complicated with, that. Sorry. Thank you. No, let me answer that with an example. So let's pretend uh, the way I pretended to be uh, Jennifer was that I was like, I can't keep track of these orders. And then people email me and I don't get all the information that I need from them all the time because I need their address. I need the the type of product. I need the quantity. I, need, I had like, let's pretend I had 10 required fields or something or 10, 10 required pieces of information I needed. Well, Jennifer needs those 10 required pieces of information. But the user story for that, in my opinion, would say, would be like, um, as a case manager, I want to fill out a form so that my order is fulfilled correctly. When that user story is, you know, finished um, and probably even fill out a form might not even might be a little too specific, but um, that actually helps Jennifer too. Okay. So that, that, that story that where the who is somebody else can actually help Jennifer yeah. um, achieve her goals. Now the story though could also be written as, as a general manager, I want to receive all required information so that I fulfill orders accurately. Um, or we need both stories. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how are we going to get information and uh, how are those people going to give it? Are they able to see a place or access a place where they can give the information? And then where Jennifer, the warehouse manager can receive the information. So you might find that in your brain, the one goal of getting all the information actually breaks down into more than one user story with more than one user. So, yeah. Um, do you have any stories that you made? Uh, very, very tiny yeah. ones, but yes. <laughs> Go ahead, share, like I share said, I started time. and then I had that question pop up. So that's okay. Um, and the first one that I did, I just realized I didn't do the so that, but <laughs> I'll do the, the second one that I completed. We'll uh, work as through a case, it. We'll work through it okay. together. As a case manager, I want to be able to request supplies needed from the emergency supply warehouse and have, uh, and you see, this is where I started to get confused. I was like, wait a minute, should I be doing this for the case mm -hmm. manager or for the, uh, for Sergio? Because uh -huh. it has to do with tracking as well. Um, and so then I was like, wait a minute. And that's what threw me off. But anyway, so as a case manager, I want to be able to request supplies needed from the emergency supply warehouse so that I can get the needed supplies to those who requested it. Because case managers are the ones that are handling the requests in their, what is it called? Distribution center. Right. <laughs> so you could, from discovery, from interviewing, you could decide the who. Because maybe they're like, we don't want to receive these requests anymore. We want the case managers to go straight to this thing. So that could be a, a way you could decide the who. All right. So so your user story is not wrong at all. I'm just going to talk about that. You know, um, like like if if uh, Jennifer can already do these requests, but she's saying I want the request to go straight to this place, or um, if she's able to make those requests at this time and we're going to keep that part of the business process, what's getting in Jennifer's way of, of um, 
making these requests, making them accurately and fulfilling these orders. So, you know, there's, you could take it on from that perspective. I think it's possible that two different teams approaching the same project, well, I know it's possible, uh, can can create different user stories and still like get the job done, still be quote, correct, you know? So d does that help you think through it a little bit too? Sort of. Okay. <laughs> I, I, it, you know what it is? Using a different example from what I'm working on, it's a, a little, because it's still so fresh, I think. It's a little... Well, it's a really Talk to weird relate, but thing. I'm getting there. I'm yeah. What do you, what, if you don't mind me asking, Elizabeth, uh, what do you do professionally or what's the most recent job you've held? Oh, yeah. This is a career change. I'm a career changer. And uh, I was in sales, yeah. okay. retail, and uh, mortgage was the most recent one. So. Yes. So when you sit down to do your job, you're like, I have a list of things to do and I'm going to like do my job and I'm going to respond to these people and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And like, that's how a lot of jobs are. And I think a lot of you probably out there, you know, in clicked uh, are doing jobs like that. And now we're asking you to perform this different job of business analyst where um, you're framing that the, all those processes that someone's doing, you're framing them in this user story um, format in order to figure out then what actually, you know, is going to get built. So it's weird and different. All right. Um, yeah. So I just want to say, like, uh, thank you so much for, you know, coming up and sharing and asking that question. I think it's a really good question. <laughs> I volunteer as tribute. Now. Okay. Yes. yes. Thank you, Elizabeth. <laughs> Pretty much. All the right. first one always coming up. Love it, Elizabeth. So Elizabeth, was this the thank first you. user story you've ever written then? Or yes, it is. Just kind of. <laughs> this is the first one. There Everybody, round of applause. Let's get the <laughs> yes, firing away. Uh, and you probably learned a lot just through that conversation. And that's kind of the whole point, which we love. Cool, cool. Appreciate All right, Elizabeth. And welcome. All right. So let's go ahead and bring up Aru. Aru, go ahead. Um, you can either read through it. If you want to share your screen, let me know. And then I will get rid of my screen. Oh, no, I didn't cold. realize I was the first one. I just raised my hand thinking I'm, I want to be in the queue, but thank you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> here you are. <laughs> Surprise. Yeah, so, <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Okay. So I'm still working on my user. I mean, I got a line of user story. I'll share that first. So I wrote as a distribution center case manager. I want to see what extra supply other distribution centers in my hundred mile radius has because I can get supplies from them faster. I don't know if it's too much in detail. Okay, or... say, say that one more time. Yeah, as a as a distribution center case manager, I want to see what extra supply other centers in my hundred mile radius have so that I can get supplies from them faster. I think I think that's really great. I oh. think that's a really, really nice user story. Um, so you're, you know, you want to see what they have, have access to their inventory, right? Um, yes. So that you can, um, so you can get supplies faster. You might be able to be just a little bit more specific in your goal there. Like, so yeah, that, that was my question. Is it a good idea to put a condition there, like in my hundred mile radius? Yes, so is yes, yes. Okay. really good a really good thing to do i um especially if maybe your why is a little bit more like so i can replenish my supplies quickly or in in under two days or something like that so you get specific like that in your goal setting and okay. so you know you know like oh if something's 100 miles away i know i can get it overnighted you know like yes. those are some assumptions you have that's something someone said in a user interview or in a, excuse me a stakeholder interview i was just um, about to say Mallory, that's really interesting um so would that be like something that pops up in like user interviews or like we have yeah. distinct distribution manners managers yeah. or distinct like regions so in your user yeah. story you'd say for x region Right. And that really right, aligns. Right. Because, like, yeah, that, so that's that's the type of specificity 
that we would be looking for. Like, I want to see the inventory in my region or within this area. Because you know what? They they probably don't need to. And people probably don't want them to see the distribution, the, the stock and distribution centers all over the world. It would be not useful. Um, there are security concerns. Sometimes you only want to show people what they need to see. Uh, yeah. So and, I guess- And with this, it's like emergency supplies, right? So you the, it's time sensitive. Like you don't want it yes. next month. You want it like to this especially, week. Especially if during your user, stakeholder interview, user interview, sorry, I don't know why I can say that. Um, especially if during that they were like, well, I don't know who to order from or gosh, if I could just talk to these people or see, or if I didn't have to talk to these people and I could just see, you know, um, yeah, that's a, that's a really beautiful user story. I want to okay, say. Okay, thank um, you. Yeah. So I was struggling a little bit with the user acceptance criteria. Uh, it said that you have to start with the verb, right? So with this, um, with this, I just started as see the extra supplies at DCs in my hundred mile radius. So yeah. Is that what it's going to like, be? Like, you could be like view inventory, yeah, of distribution centers in my hundred mile radius. Um, maybe, maybe in the acceptance criteria. Sometimes the acceptance criteria is where you can get feature specific. Okay, um, you can be like have a list view of this or or something like uh, that. You you can get a little bit more, or at least we do. You know, mm -hmm. with features in the acceptance criteria, it's so like have a list view be able to view these categories, you know, things like things like that. So okay. but that's a really great starting point. Yes. So be able okay. To OK, yeah. So that's where I'm at. I haven't gotten to the if then yet. <laughs> well, that's OK. Don't worry about that. Okay, um, yeah. Jeff, did you see Etsy's comment here? Yep. Yeah. Let's go ahead and, and post them. Um, are yeah, great job. You. Do you, any other ones that you wanted feedback on or is that good? No, I think this is good for now. Yeah. Thank you so much. Awesome. Sounds good. So we'll get to Nicole, Hema, and Bill on deck. Um, let's go ahead and share Etsy's. I'll put them on the screen if that works, Mallory. Yeah. Um, Etsy said, well, first of all, said that their baby is being a little too loud. And I just want to say solidarity. My kids were screaming at the beginning of this session. So um, solidarity there. As a company, I want to centralize all communications so staff can have access to distribution centers and proffer transparency. So I just want to say... Probably we want the who not to be the company. We want it to get a little bit there. There's a level of specificity there um, and centralize all communications. Once again, a little too broad. Now, this could be more like uh, an epic. OK, a larger umbrella under which many other user stories fall. So like we have the communication centralization epic and then. How are we doing that? Um, how are we promoting transparency, et cetera? Uh, so I think that it's a really good start. Get a little bit more specific there. But I uh, something I really do like about this story is that we centralize communication to prefer transparency. And those are two very different things. And like, you know, fostering transparency, et cetera, that's a nice that's a nice big goal, and I love how different those two things are. So I just want to just want to say that. Awesome. And then uh, the second one. A company want to automate my supplies and distribution portal, but portal, <laughs> so that I can have access to real time data. So once again, we want to get a little bit more specific. Automate the portal. Like, if we automate the portal. What are we automating? Are we automating orders? Are we automating shipping? Are we automating receipt of requests? So is this actually three different stories? And then having access to real-time data, that tells me something about reporting. Okay, like when I, and actually I think access to real-time data might go in our want to, like as a, um, uh, as a CFO, I want access to real-time data so that I can make, financial decisions about or make decisions about what to order. Okay, so um, access to real time data, I think isn't a big enough why. All right. So those are that's my feedback for those but really good start everybody like these are really good. So yeah. awesome. I know we and got some Nicole, I see, Yeah, yeah. And Nicole, I see yours in the chat. I'll definitely do that. We'll bring somebody or we'll bring Hima up on stage. So Hima, let me know if you're gonna share your screen, I can pull mine down. We'd love to actually view them if you've written them on your computer. If you wrote them on new paper, notepad, that's fine. But if yes, you want to yes. share them on your screen, just yes, let me please. know. Yes, I would yeah. like to share my screen. Good. Fire away. 
And then we've got Bill and Teo on deck, and Nicole will, will pop hey, those up. Hey, Teo. Hi, Teo. Hey, yo. Seen, we've, we've been in a sprint together before. Okay. So, actually, like, uh, I have, like, three different stories. One is, like, uh, like when, like, uh, Sergio is working for a company, why are we sending everything to his personal email instead of the work email? Mm-hmm. And uh, having like a subject, like uh, it says like uh, he's having a hard time going through all the emails, right? So why don't we put as a email subject and email from address where it is coming from so that like Sergio can see and track the emails faster? Yes. So all of this, these, these things you have on the page here are really good notes. And mm -hmm. now we need to turn them into a user story. So you're totally right. Like he's just a company. Why are we sending him to an inbox? Why is it getting so full? You've got things about an order tracking object and using a flow. So we want to keep specific Salesforce um, technologies or any technologies. Because even if you are, like if you're a Salesforce consultant, you'll work with other technologies as well. Your clients mm -hmm. will work with other technologies. Um, so, so keep those specific Salesforce functionalities in mind, you know, that of course they're always in our brains, but for your user story, it needs to be as a warehouse manager, I want to, uh, let's see. So we're, you're, you're thinking approval process, but we need to not say that yet. Um, maybe you need to see, I want to receive completed requests, mm -hmm. uh, or, you know, in my inbox or something like that so that I can approve them or, or that would be like one of your stories. Maybe maybe we've decided Sergio only needs to be involved in like the last step and someone else is going to take over these intermediate things or or maybe an automation is going to take over those, those things. Um, so make sure to, you will need to use that format um, mm -hmm. that we discussed, but these are excellent, excellent notes in there. Um, yeah, so and then we've got tracking inventory. So yep. Just, just think about how that's connected to the bigger goal. Don't try to solution right away. That's what, that, and that's what they call it, right? In okay. the Salesforce world, uh, mm -hmm. solutioning, um, coming, solving the problem, coming up with the solution. So just uh, don't, don't get there too early. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Thank uh, you. This actually made me think of Elizabeth's earlier, right when we were talking about um, where to kind of start. Right, Mallory, and I'm wondering if, like, if you're on projects, what you and the team might do is like, what are the mission critical things that we need to get done, like, right now, right, that come up in discovery, and like, would you ever just start with those user stories and be like, we got to figure these out first, and then kind of layer on, or how does prioritization kind of work? Yeah, so prioritization is key. You can't have user stories without some kind of. I mean, you can, but you shouldn't have user stories without some kind of like priority or waiting. OK, because you need to estimate how much effort they will take um, and who is going to own them. So if I have a team member who is like my developer counterpart and he has user stories and they're all 13 points, they're all huge user stories. Well, he's only going to be able to do so many. So how are we going to prioritize that? Uh, so that's something that is determined with the business. And also as we're working along on the project, we'll come up with user stories that like would be super cool to have. And we'll put them in what's called the backlog. Um, and we know we don't need it for the first iteration of the project, right? Um, we're putting it in the backlog. We can bring it up later. So yes, you must prioritize. How do you do that? You look at your timeline, you look at what's feasible, you look at what has to be done. Um, that's where you hear MVPs talked about a lot, minimum viable products. So keep that in mind. Do you guys use Job to Be Done framework at all, Mallory, at work? We sometimes do, but not as much. I know that other people use it more, I feel like. Mm -hmm. Just wondering. Uh, Bill, you're on the stage. Bill, where do you live? Tell us all about it. It's Phoenix. <laughs> Tell us where you live. <laughs> To the northwest. Gotta, I, see, we gotta we gotta pull it up on people's things. So what's your address? No, <laughs> <laughs> don't tell us that, Bill. No, no. Because then I can't post this on YouTube. Yes. Then, you know, no, no worries, no worries. <laughs> can you hear me? 
Yes, we yep, did. You're good, though. Okay, fantastic. So I think the weakest user story of the five that I wrote this afternoon is this one. As a supply team member, I need to send contextual questions and comments about inventory status, requests, approvals, et cetera, to my fellow team members so that I can more proactively manage inventory to be ready for emergency supply requests. Mm. And uh, of course, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking chatter or Slack, depending on what you've got and what's integrated, but I'm not solutioning. And my criteria, <laughs> my criteria are, uh, can I send targeted messages to team members tagged with references to specific order shipments, requests, and approval cycles? Can I view the message traffic between other supply team members? And can I join conversations between other team members if I have something to add? Yeah, I think... That's an interesting one. Yeah, this is an interesting one. So send questions, comments about inventory status requests. Of... I mean, I think that just might be a little long in the in the what you want to do. Um, you could just be like, communicate with my fellow team members about inventory, you know, okay. and stuff like that so we can pro okay, proactively manage inventory to be ready for emergency supply requests. So you're communicating with them. I think this is a little bit more of like a, maybe we don't know this from the interview, you know, uh, but just, you know, I'm kind of like jumping in there. So we're going to communicate with our team members like about inventory. Uh, does that help us manage the inventory or because to me, and I'm not solutioning either, um, <laughs> having, having like, you know, um, objects with stock levels, et cetera, would help us manage the, the inventory, but maybe we're like, maybe we are reaching like a little bit of a different goal with this type of communication. Um, are we, but, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, I think it's a good user story. I'm trying to find something, you know, to, yeah, to kind of it was critique about the it. The middle of it of like truncated and narrowing it down to like that core problem. Mm -hmm. Right, Mallory? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, yeah, and I was, what I was trying to, I was, this, this user story was capturing his last couple of comments in the interview around, mm -hmm. uh, and it actually, uh, it was more around the idea that the case managers themselves wanted to be able to talk with each other. Um, so, okay, good. Thank you. Thank you for the feedback. Yeah, great, great. Good job, Bill. Um, all Thanks. right, cool. So we've got, um, so let's go ahead and bring Tao up. Tail, welcome to the stage. Welcome back. Wow. Uh, right. Thanks, Bill. Sorry. Oh, you're good. Hi, am I audible? Yes. Yep, you're good, Tail. Sorry, I have my boy here with me. <laughs> I'm helping with right. his um, assignment, school assignment. So, can I share my screen, please? Yep, go ahead. Um, I don't see. So, it's the okay. bottom yes. little percent audience, yeah. I always like to, Jeff, I do a little uh, charades. I'm like, there's a square at the bottom of your screen with an arrow. <laughs> I'm like a, an air traffic controller. <laughs> you see, like, I couldn't even. It's not me. Um, it's so I did a couple. Oh, oh, they're looking good already. I can't even read them, but look good. Okay. <laughs> nice for Manning. So, yeah, I got confused along the way, so I must have modeled some things up. I just did something. Okay, as the general warehouse manager... I want to be able to manage the flow of supplies from the emergency supply warehouse to location specific distribution centers so that I can, oh, well, that's, that's a pretty darn good user story. Um, Teo, number one, uh, let's talk about this. So you want to manage the flow of supplies from the emergency warehouse to the distribution center so that you can coordinate a crisis when it happens. So that is great because it shows this is where like your user stories have some em empathy in them. So I can almost tell that someone said to you or you read somewhere like in a crisis, <clears throat> I have to be able to get things from one place to another or something like that. So I really mm -hmm. I, I think that's really a great. Um, I just pick from yeah. I just pick from the scenario up here. Yeah, yeah, and so when you manage the flow of you know things from one place to another, um, 
that can be a lot of steps. So it's possible this user story could break down to like into more than one thing. I don't know. Like maybe we discover we need, um, if you start to get into your acceptance criteria and you find out you need like tracking numbers and you need to know how heavy something is or something like that, then maybe we need to break it down. But I think this one's pretty good. So um, you did the given when then, which I yeah. like that uh, too. Um, given that there's crisis, <laughs> I efficiently manage the flow of supplies. Um, then emergency supply. I would get a little bit more specific with your acceptance criteria. So I would mm -hmm. say given there's a crisis, it would be more like given there's a crisis and I receive an order. Okay. Okay. Or g given, given I receive an order when I, you know, or, or something like that, um, you know, then I can fulfill the order in a timely manner or something like, or given that I receive an order when they're, you know, or something like that. So um, okay. don't just reword your user story, get a little bit more specific there about like what managing the flow of supplies means. Okay, so that's where you can that's where you can get a little bit more specific in the acceptance criteria. So that's that's my feedback there, but like a really good job there, Teo. Okay, thank you. I tried to work on a couple. But, um, my issue there was the acceptance criteria. I, I'm used to this, um, the given when then. Um, so that's and why I tried to write it in this format. I think that was when Jeff and I were discussing, this is where I see the most variation. Some people acceptance criteria is some bullets. Sometimes it's okay. And then we want to link to all these different things or it's just a sentence. So um, I don't think it's wrong that you chose a different format for those. So, so good job there. Okay. And Jeff, do we have a, I know we're getting close to time here. Yeah, I'm going to, so we'll, we'll go ahead and, um, great job, Teo. I'm going to go you. ahead. I'll, I'll start to share them on the screen here, um, Mallory. So we've got, I'll pop up a, a ruse acceptance criteria first, and then we'll go to some of the other user stories. Um, so we've got Nicole's, we'll go to next. Okay, Aru, my UAC attempt, uh, if there are extra supplies available at the distribution center in a 100 mile radius, then the manager can request it. Um, yes, uh, looking back at your user story though, I think you said view. So that is, it, it might work, but I think there are, there, there could be two user stories here. There could be like can view and and can order, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, it, because those things might require like a lot of different moving parts. So so just keep that in mind. Um, but I uh, that that can work too. So so yes, but in the user story, include that you want them to be able to request it as well. I think is maybe my edit there. It's kind of like going back in time a little bit. Uh, me, me telling that you that you should also do that because, you know, do we view, do we request, um, are those the same thing? Does requesting automatically imply that we can also see it? So just uh, make sure that you're specific there in the user story. Awesome. Great. So let's go to Nicole's. Let's see how many of these we can kind of get through. As a warehouse manager, I want to be able to track supply requests. Do, do, do and current stock at a distribution center so that I can address supply shortages. But yes, that's that's great. You want to track these requests in current stock. You might end up wanting to divide that out into two user stories and they would maybe <laughs> be under the same goal, but it's possible that like tracking current stock and supplier and tracking supply requests that might end, end up being two different stories possibly depending on your project depending on what's already in place so great job nicole all right let's go to adonia's and i know nicole you've got another one as a warehouse manager i want to be able to see supplies inventory in one central location repository so that i can efficiently manage supply levels and address any shortages um yeah i think that's good 
view all, what if, okay so if you want to like see all stock levels that you can efficiently manage the supply i think there might be a level of specificity and it, this just might be that you don't have it from the the interview um but yeah i think this i think this one is is just fine so you can manage supply levels and address any shortages um yeah i think that one's really good thank you adonia awesome and then we'll go to uh... Nithya Priya, sorry if I pronounce your name wrong. As a warehouse manager, I want email notifications and reminders to follow up so that I won't miss any requests or shipments. Um, yes, but uh, we've said careful about using specific functionality. And so even though email notification sounds pretty general, I would take out the word email. So you could just say, I want notifications or reminders so that I don't miss any requests. So, because perhaps those reminders are going to come from push notifications on an app that you design, or they're going to come from chatter or Slack or something like that. So even the word email, unless you know for sure, like, oh, we, you know, we are, we're sticking with this, but that could be in your acceptance criteria. That's where I would put it. I would say I want notifications or reminders, and then I would put where it's coming from in the acceptance criteria. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Mallory. Uh, we went rapid fire. Uh, not sure. So, Mallory, we maybe have like 15 seconds, 30 seconds in terms of just like general wrapping this up. Any thoughts for the learners? Uh, great job, everybody, for coming up on stage. This is this was great. And I know it was some practice for some new people. Elizabeth, awesome. Yeah, great job, everyone. Um, thank you to everyone who went out on a limb and did it for the first time. This is huge. It's a very different way of thinking. Um, just keep learning, uh, keep studying, and um, come back for a sprint. We would love to have you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and these ones, these skill challenges, I feel like these are stories we could do on and on and on, right, Mallory? Because this yeah. is so critical in the type of work that you're going to be doing. Um, as I mentioned, we do have a feedback form in here. It always helps us. It's much appreciated. Uh, going on to appreciation, Mallory, thank you, thank you, thank you for offering your time this evening over where you are. Uh, it's much appreciated sharing your knowledge with everybody, and I hope everybody was able to learn a lot in the last rapid hour that we have. And of course, I know we'll see you all next time with maybe some more ABBA, another Mal ABBA Mallory song next time. <laughs> Definitely some Alrighty. ABBA. All right, bye everyone. <laughs> see you, everybody. Have a great night.